Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Switzerland for EU4 1.31 Leviathan. If you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 30% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. So Switzerland is a nation in the south of the HRE bordering some stronger nations which limit our expansion opportunities such as Burgundy over here, Austria over here and over here and a free city in Constance. So needless to say we're only gonna go through Burgundy or down in Italy at least in the early game. And later we're gonna be right on the border of the HRE once the Italian nations leave. Switzerland also starts off with a unique government form the autonomous Swiss cantons which give us plus 50% mercenary manpower minus 30 max absolute plus 1 free policies and minus 50 governing capacity. Those free policies are very nice having 6 instead of 3 although we will be taking advantage of them later rather than now. Now when you start off at Switzerland I do recommend restarting until you get Milan not to rival you. If Milan rivals you they are gonna ally the 3 leagues, it's gonna make expansion harder and we actually want to ally Milan ourselves. Another thing you can look out for is if Savoy have rivaled Austria because if they haven't rivaled Austria they may ally them although this isn't something that's necessary. The only necessary thing is the Milan not being rivaled to you. So let's take a look at what we need to do as Switzerland. First we're gonna go into our estates and summon the diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're gonna give the clergy religious state, we're gonna give the nobility primacy of the nobility increased levies, we're gonna give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, and indebt it to the burghers. Then we're gonna activate the encouraged development state edict in the state of Romandie and dev Freiburg up once in Diplo. Then we're gonna sell titles and seize land. Now we need to unlock the mission Consolidate Switzerland where we need to have our army 90% of our force limit and a stability of 1. So we're gonna take our army and destroy these two cavalry regiments. They are pretty expensive. We are also gonna hire the free company along with one more infantry regiment. Now it's time for some advisors. Get a Diplo rep or improve relations guy if you have him. I do have a Diplo rep guy. Get him even if he's a level 2. We're gonna fire him later. We'll get other advisors later as well. Now it's time for some alliances. If you got a Diplo rep guy, you will be able to ally Milan right off the bat. If not, just improve relations with them a little bit. Then there we go, I've allied Milan. You may do it a couple of months later. And I'm also gonna start improving relations with Austria. Now it's time to wait for a couple of months to get 100 admin points so we can stab up. Now that a few months have passed and we have 100 admin points, we will be able to stab up. And it's gonna be different for everyone because we do have random rulers at the start. I got a 140, which is pretty unfortunate. Now, once we stab up, we will be able to unlock the mission Consolidate Switzerland. It gives us cores on these two provinces right here owned by the three leagues and these three provinces right here owned by Savoy and their subject Geneva. But now that we've done that, we are also gonna recruit a general or give your ruler military command. If he's bad like mine, you will want to do this if you're ready for the stab loss, that is. And it is time to declare our first war, which is gonna be with the three leagues. And and we're gonna declare a reconquest for sure. At this point you can fire your Diplo advisor if you want to, if you don't keep him around and we're also gonna hire a mill advisor. I'm gonna take this discipline guy. During this war you can also start building a spy network on Burgantz. And once the war is over we will of course be full annexing the three leagues. Now we can fulfill the mission integrate the three leagues. We gain some dev. I actually forgot to set rivals so right before the war with the three leagues you should have rivaled the three leagues themselves to get even more power projection and prestige my bad it's just something i forgot to do but you're also gonna want to rival savoy right before that war along with another nation in my case i'm gonna rival Württemberg and genoa don't rival any of the free cities though <laughs> and don't forget to rival people like i did now once the war is done you may be able to ally austria like i am in my case if you aren't able to do that and this is a 50 50 pretty much and it's totally not necessary for the guide It's just nice being allied to the Emperor right a nice little bonus But if you can't ally Austria try improving with someone like France for example They are another nation which we can possibly ally if I improve with France and if I wasn't allied to Austria I could ally them so try and ally one of France and Austria Although that's just a bonus and it's totally not necessary for the guide now We're gonna chill for a month or two and reconsolidate and then we're gonna be getting ready for our next war But after this war is finished and after you've stabbed up we can can give the clergy clerical advisory council, the nobility aristocratic councillors, and the burghers commercial advisory board. Now Switzerland does also start off with 10% army professionalism, I'm at 5 right now. At the start you could slack in once or twice if you want to to gain even more manpower 
if you feel like it's necessary. Now once a couple of months have passed after the war with the three leagues, and in my case a couple of years have passed because I had to help out Austria in the classic Burgundy versus Liege war. <laughs> Burgundy actually won. But it is time to declare on Savoy. In my case they're even in war with Geneva right now, so that should make things a little easier. But at this point they should have one or two small allies, or if you're unlucky, another big ally. In my case they've actually allied Naples, which is pretty unfortunate, but it is still a winnable war as long as you call in Milan. So it is time to declare on them and take back our course. During this war you will want to activate the defensive edict in both Romandy and Switzerland. And once you've defeated Savoy, and I'm gonna be honest this is a pretty difficult war because Naples is involved in my situation. Of course if they don't have a strongish ally like this it'll be much easier. But once you're done with Savoy you will be taking back all three of your cores, Vado, Valese and Geneva. And depending on your war score you can also humiliate them, take war reps, take all their money depending on how much you beat them up. In my case I do want to get out of this war as soon as I can because it is pretty difficult. And once this war is over you will be able to unlock the mission Vaud and Wallace which will give us some dev in these two provinces that we took. And we're also going to be able to unlock the mission Sway Geneva. If you didn't take this and just left Geneva on their own they would become your vassal. Honestly there's not a big point to it so I just annex them and we gain some mill power. And there we go those are our first two wars done. In your case you should have done this a little earlier than me about four or five years earlier. But because I got into that Liège war with Austria and because Naples was allied to Savoy in my case it did take me a little while longer. But basically we've got no aggressive expansion from these wars because all the provinces we took were our cores. So now it's time to dev a bit and catch up with tech before going on our next route of expansion which is 99% of the time gonna be into Burgons. At this point you can find some other allies, in my case these are the nations that I can ally and I'm gonna wanna get someone close to me and someone a little stronger as well. Here's Württemberg, they're pretty close to me so I will ally them. And Brandenburg are looking pretty stable this game, they're also allied to Austria so I'll ally them as well. Basically whoever you can and whoever you think is the strongest. In my case I'm allied to Austria, Provence, Württemberg and Brandenburg right now. At this point we are also going to be focusing on getting our stability up to 2 so we can unlock this mission as well as our Republican tradition up to 90. It will give us some perma claims on some areas right here. Now once your first war with Savoy is done it is fine to break your alliance with Milan. In my case that's already happened because well Savoy made Milan break their alliance with me. Of course if you don't have any other allies don't do it but since I do have other allies I will not be real allying them. And like I said now our expansion opportunities are Bergantz. Once again Savoy you may have even taken more from them. You can do that by the way you can take more from them. In that first war I only took these three because the war was pretty difficult. But that's another expansion opportunity and once you've broken your alliance with Milan we will also be able to expand this one. Now at this point you should be declaring on Bergantz. In my case they've joined Venice's trade league so obviously I won't be doing that until Venice gets into a war with the Ottomans. But you should be declaring on Bergantz at this point. We basically want to snake out of here between Austria and these two free cities of Constance and Memmingen. In my case Ulm has also been made into a free city. But if something weird like this has happened in your game too where Bergantz joined in a trade league or they have a strong ally well you're either going to be waiting for your truce with Savoy or Milan to run out before expanding into Italy. Now once 1460 comes around the Shadow Kingdom event will trigger where Austria gets to pick whether the Italian nations leave or stay. Of course we are gonna vote for them to leave but it doesn't matter since Austria will still pick it anyway and it doesn't matter what we vote on. But after that happens most of these nations right here should leave the HRE which will give us significantly less aggressive expansion when fighting them. So that's a nice bonus right there. You pretty much do want to hold off on fighting them until they leave. At this point by the way you should have Burgons. Like I said I don't have have them because well they're in a trade league with Venice and you should be working your way to fighting Augsburg. And there we go the incident has finished and let's see which Italian nations left and in my case actually all of the Italian nations left. The only ones that would pretty much stay are any nations that Austria made free cities or ones that are allied to Austria. For your tier 2 government reform you should take political dynasties or republicanism. I do like political dynasties a little bit more. And like I said once you have 90 republican tradition and 2 stability you will be able to unlock the mission reorganize the confederacy and it gives us perma claims on these provinces right here. And now that I have those claims since I can't fight Burgans, I'm actually going to be declaring on Milhaus right here, co-belligerenting Strasbourg so I can fight Trier and Burgans as well and I'm going to try and make them leave the Venice trade league. Of course if you're locked in like this you could also unlock this mission and fight these other nations up here. 
your first idea group as Switzerland, I recommend taking plutocratic ideas, a little underrated idea group if you ask me, and it isn't talked about enough because, well, only republics can get it and there are only so many republics in EU4, but it's an all-around excellent idea group, especially for Switzerland, with this mercenary stuff right here, plus 10% mercenary manpower and plus 2.5% mercenary discipline, 10% morale of armies, awesome, minus 2 national unrest, excellent, plus 1 merchant, no-brainer, plus 10% goods produced, one of the best modifiers in the game, plus 25% caravan power, yeah, that's alright, and the 20% manpower recovery speed is great, along with the institution spread. So plutocratic ideas for our first idea group. Of course, once you unlock that idea group, you will want to focus on mill. And since I can't actually annex these nations up here, I will be making Strasbourg my vassal and taking all their money. And now I will be annexing Mulhaus. that's how you get around that little uh, not being able to annex nations you're not connected with. And I will be keeping this province for myself. By the way, once again helping out Austria in the classic Burgundy versus Liege war. Once you've taken care of Burgunds, or like in my case these two nations up here, depending on whoever you were fighting in this portion of Germany, it is time to shift our attention back to Italy where we're going to be declaring on Savoy once again or Milan. In my case Milan seems to be weaker, so I will be declaring on them. By this point, like I said, they should have left the HRE. Now when taking provinces from Milan you are going to want to be very careful since these are all high dev provinces in the state of Lombardy. So that's why it's especially good to wait for them to leave the empire so we get less aggressive expansion. And in this first war with Milan I'm going to be taking these two provinces up here. If I take their capital I'm going to get a coalition. That's not something I want. Even though not a lot of nations would join and the coalition would probably not even form it is still 42 aggressive expansion and it is quite a lot. Whereas taking these two is only 28. I'm also going to accumulate them and take war reps. And by this point you should have Burgundy, maybe some other provinces up here and you should have fought Savoy for the second time or Milan for the first time. Now it's time to chill a bit and shift our focus back to Germany. This is pretty much something we're going to be doing all the time. Fighting here, then here, then here, then here. To disperse aggressive expansion in the different culture groups, the German and the Italian one. Once you get your third merchant from the plutocratic idea group, it is a good idea to make him collect in Genoa. Now we are going to be moving our main trade node to Genoa later most likely but at this point he can just collect while we collect from Champagne as well and transfer from Bordeaux and the Ryland to Champagne. In my case I'm finally gonna be taking advantage of the fact that Venice is in two wars right now with Austria and with the Mamluks to declare on Burgundy. Finally. Of course you will already have Burgundy in your case. For your second idea group as Switzerland, I recommend taking admin ideas, another no-brainer specifically for Switzerland, mainly due to all the mercenary stuff, mercenary cost discount, mercenary maintenance discount, mercenary manpower plus 25%, the plus 25 gov cap finisher is excellent, the admin tech cost finisher is excellent, interest per annum, it'll help us out with a couple of loans, advisors is nice, and the minus 25% CCR is excellent. So admin ideas for your second idea group. Of course, once you've taken care of a German nation once again, in my case I'm still in this war with Brigands because I'm fighting the Knights as well and I can't peace out, it's once again time to shift focus back to Italy. So we fought a nation in Germany, we fought a nation in Italy, we fought a nation in Germany, and now we're back to Italy. It's time to declare on Savoy or Milan, depending on who you didn't fight in the previous war. I'm gonna be declaring on Savoy now. For your first stage ability, you should of course take Justified Wars to reduce that aggressive expansion impact. We are in the HRE, and we are expanding in Italy. And of course I will be full annexing Burgundy. <laughs> way too late for me, you will have Burgundy about 20 years earlier than me. And once again when fighting an Italian nation, we will be careful on what we'll be taking. I know I declared for their capital, but I'm actually going to be taking these provinces down here in Italy. So I'm going to take these two, along with all their money, war reps, the standard stuff. At this point aggressive expansion may be pretty high with both German and Italian nations, so it is time to chill a little bit before once again declaring on a German nation. As Switzerland mercs are so cheap and we get such good bonuses from them that you will want to go pretty merc heavy well pretty much for the entire game, or at least until the mid game. Right now I have 9k regular infantry units and an 8k free company. Free company infantry regiments only cost 0.15 ducats a month. 
0.15 times 8 is only 1.2 ducats, whereas the regular infantry regiments cost 0.28 ducats a month. And this regular army is costing me 2.5 ducats a month, so it is pretty cheap and we get some really nice bonuses from our national ideas, from plutocratic ideas and from admin ideas. So that's why I'm still keeping them around, even though it is only the free company. Of course, if you have vassalized some of these nations up here, either to bypass scoring restrictions like I did with Strasbourg, or just because of aggressive expansion, you should be annexing them once 10 years have passed and you have enough relations with them. I'm gonna annex Strasbourg right now. For your tier 3 government reform, I recommend taking frequent elections. If you're having problems with aggressive expansion, you can change your merchants to establish communities instead of focusing on trade. For example, if the nations in Rhineland are mad at you, like they are mad at me in my case, you can just click this button right here, establish community, and we gain 15% more improved relations. I am gonna do that over here in Rhineland, and I am also gonna do it in Genoa. You could also flip your merchant from Bordeaux and put him in Vienna or Saxony or something and make him do the same thing over there. Once things have cooled down a little bit from your previous conquests, it is time to once again declare on the nations in Germany which we have claims on. In my case it's gonna be Baden, they do seem to be the weakest and I am gonna call in Brandenburg. Now when aggressive expansion is pretty high, you may want to look into vassalizing nations once again. In my case it isn't that high, but let's actually see what happens if we full annex Baden. So that's 25 aggressive expansion, whereas vassalizing them is 17. Now you may think that 8 aggressive expansion is irrelevant, and we don't get a coalition either way, but the difference between full annexing and vassalizing them may mean a couple of more years sitting around doing nothing. So. If you want to full annex someone and you still won't get a coalition, do it. But you are going to have to wait around a little bit longer and not do anything. So that's why I am going to vassalize Baden and take all their money so I can pretty much declare another war faster. Once you've taken care of another nation in Germany, it's time to chill a bit before shifting our focus back to Italy, once again fighting either Milan or Savoy, or whoever is present here at this point. Of course, the map might not look the same in your case. In my case, I am probably gonna be fighting Milan. Of course, during this time, you should be spying on these nations, since we won't be getting claims from our missions. For your second age ability, you should take Transfer Subject and Claims Bordering Claims. Now, this isn't so much for us to steal vassals and personal union subjects of someone else, but it's more about getting around the obstacles, meaning nations that we can't really fight at this point in order to fight other nations, such as getting claims on a free city and then the province behind it in order to fight this nation or something like that. Basically getting around the restrictions that are Austria and the free cities, maybe even Burgundy. And in my case, Burgundy actually got into a PU with Austria, but France fought a war with Austria and took Burgundy from them. So I have a super powerful France in my game and it's definitely gonna be a problem expanding over here, at least for me. Now that I've chilled a little bit, I will be declaring on Milan once again and continuing my Italian conquests. And once you're done fighting Milan or Savoy, once again be careful because of aggressive expansion. In my case, I'm only gonna take their capital province of Milan, along with war reps and some ducats. Now it's time to go back to Germany, and now I'll be declaring on the nation of Augsburg. They seem to be the easiest nation to fight. And I will of course be full annexing Salzburg. Oops, Augsburg, not Salzburg. And because this is a slower game, we're in the HRE, we're fighting in Italy, by around the 1500s, your game should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as Switzerland in these provinces right here, and then fought the three leagues to get our cores back from over here, and Savoy to get our cores back from over here. After we conquered the entirety of Switzerland, it was time for us to snake out of somewhere while avoiding Burgundy, Austria, and the free cities basically through Burgons, or jumping with claims to the north of Germany, or getting the claims here from the mission and then fighting those nations, vassalizing them, annexing them, even though we aren't connected to them. After that, we also broke our alliance with Milan. By the way, that alliance with Milan is integral for the start. So let me remind you once again about that to restart until you can ally them. We did need them for that first war versus Savoy and we needed them to not rival us because if they do rival us, they ally the three leagues. After that, we started pushing into Milan too. And after that, it was just basically switching up conquests from this region of Germany to Italy, Germany, Italy, Germany, Italy, in order to avoid coalitions and decrease aggressive expansion. And by now, your game should look a little something like this. Basically, you should have most of these provinces over here that we get claims on from our missions in the areas of Alsace, Baden, West Swabia, and East Swabia. You should have most of that. And you should also have most of 
Piedmont and Lombardy. Maybe you even have these two provinces right here in the area of Savoy. That's where we've expanded. Of course, that is going slowly because, like I said, high dev provinces and HRE, that's what you get. But by this point, we also have a ton of forts, something you do want to have in Switzerland to lean into that whole Switzerland fortress roleplay mercenary sort of style of game. And we're making a ton of money. Right now, we're making 1.74 ducats a month. Of course, if we lower army maintenance and turn off all the forts that we have, and we do have a lot, we are making 5.44 very respectable for this point in the game and for such a small nation like this of course i do have established communities so if i maximize profit i will be making even more and we don't even have any loans inflation is low due to the really inflation reduction guy i have and for forgiving usury with the pope and I've also been building a ton of buildings, something that you should be doing during this time as well. I built marketplaces in all the center of trade provinces, workshops in all the high value trade good provinces, such as cloth and iron, mostly in this location right here, north of Italy, south of Germany. I've also built a couple of churches, some army buildings too. Actually, they're getting built right now. And that's how things are looking like. Of course, after this point, you will continue to build those same buildings in all the relevant provinces, production buildings in high value trade good provinces, marketplaces in centers of trade and stuff like that and you will want to be upgrading your forts and building them all around these beautiful mountain provinces that we have such as this one right here we're going to be upgrading it this one right here too the one in burn even this one over here even though it's in grasslands and we just got that idea alpine defensiveness where we get some reduced fort maintenance and increased fort defense of course you already know about switzerland's national ideas which focus on mercenary stuff mainly and we've also fulfilled plutocratic ideas an excellent starting idea Idea group for Switzerland and also admin ideas as well. We're very close to filling them up. For your next idea group, I recommend defensive ideas to lean into that whole Switzerland thing, morale, fort defense, attrition. You already know what defensive ideas gives you. And it's definitely very nice for Switzerland, like I said, to lean into the whole roleplay thing. You will have a lot of fun picking outside of the usual idea groups that get picked. And if you don't want defensive, I don't even recommend quantity, to be honest. I recommend quality. It meshes much better with our national ideas. Even though we basically lose out on three of these ideas because they're for boats, you may want to do the Switzer Lake achievement and not conquer any coastal provinces. Or even if you do, you can just give them to your subjects or I'll explain later how to get the achievement. But I do like quality ideas. Or you can even go with offensive if you don't want defensive. But I do recommend defensive. You will have the most fun, even though it isn't the most optimal, you know. After taking defensive, I do recommend economic ideas to help us build even more buildings, reduce inflation, production efficiency, dev cost. It will help you out a ton. And after that is pretty much your choice. So my picks are plutocratic admin, defensive, economic. You won't get a ton of super crazy good policies from these idea groups, but they do provide a lot of fun. For your next government reform for tier 4, I recommend administrative divisions because we do have a very low governing capacity as Switzerland. As we can see, I'm already over it. For tier 5, I recommend the presidential system. For tier 6, I recommend devolution of powers for plus 1 diplomat to help us combat the aggressive expansion in the HRE. For tier 7, you can pick whichever one you want. You get a possible policy from both of them, either admin or diplo, and you can take whichever one you want based on whichever one you need during that point in the game. For tier 8, I recommend taking Citizen Tree for even more morale. We got so many morale modifiers, it's crazy, and we're gonna be getting even more from this one. For tier 9, I recommend taking Appointment by Committee. And for tier 10, if you wanna stay a Republic, you should take Reinforce Republican Values. If it's the Age of Absolutism and you wanna flip out of a Republic by that point, of course, you should become a Monarchy. After this point, you will continue to expand in all the same areas that we've been expanding pretty much in Italy and in this region of Germany before we become strong enough to take on nations such as Austria, Burgundy, if they're independent, or maybe they'll be under France or under Austria. We can't get them, we're a republic, and before you're strong enough to take on France as well. So you'll basically be growing in the HRE, sort of in this direction mostly. Of course, you will be taking it slow early on, and later we will get an option to leave the HRE through a certain mission, Switzerland in the Empire down here, and I do actually recommend leaving the Empire. The other missions aren't that crazy. 
this one focuses on forts, this one focuses on beating up Austria, and this one as well. The Affair of the Sausages focuses on us becoming Protestant or Reformed. If you want to go the historic route and the more RP route, you should go Reformed as Switzerland, but if you're not into that, I do recommend Protestant. So Reformed if you're into the roleplay, but Protestant if you really want to get into the modifiers. And like I said, Switzerland does have one unique achievement, Switzer Lake, where you need to own 50 provinces in Europe without owning a coastal province. Now, you can actually take coastal provinces during your game, and then when you're ready to get the achievement, just give them back to the nations that they belong to, or feed them to your subject and make them own all the coasts while you own all the inland provinces. Or if you want to do it hardcore mode, don't conquer coastal provinces at all and instead feed them to your subject. For example, when I fight Savoy next, I'm gonna take these three provinces from them, but I'm gonna leave them with Nizza. And then I'm gonna feed them Albenga and Genoa or something like that and leave all the coastal provinces to my subjects. That's how I did my Switzer League achievement. As we can see, it's not available over here, which means I have it. I did a hardcore mode, so to say, without actually owning any provinces. But if you want to get it, just give up your coastal provinces and you will get it. And like I said, by around the 1500s, your game should look a little something like this. If you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is going to go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Safe Games Discord channel. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 30% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. And join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.